Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Bible in One Year with the Preacher's Husband. Today, we're talking about Exodus chapter 19 through 21. Now, we start out in chapter 19 with, it says, In the third month from the very day, the Israelites left the land of Egypt. They came to the Sinai wilderness. They traveled from Rephidim, where they were attacked, and then they attacked the other, other group and beat them. And they came to the Sinai wilderness. Now that is down. They camped out there. That is down. It is at the very southern tip of the Sinai Peninsula. Is considered the wilderness of Sinai. Here it's shortened to the wilderness of Sin. But it is the wilderness of Sinai in that area. Down where Mount Sinai is. It says it's got a question mark there. But that's where the traditional version is. So... The Lord talks to Moses and says, Y'all need to get ready for this. I'm going to reveal myself to everybody. And I'm going to tell you all the rules. So Moses said, okay, what we do? And he says, I'm going to come in a dense cloud, but you guys need to get ready. For the next two days, you need to clean yourself up, wash your clothes, consecrate yourself. Everything's got to be clean. Both your bodies, your clothes, everything's got to be clean. Even inside, your soul. It's all got to be clean. And what you need to do is you need to set up some boundaries around Mount Sinai. Don't let anybody come up this mountain except you. You're the only one to come up this mountain. And um, if anybody tries to come up this mount- mountain and pass the boundary, if anybody touches it, they're going to be in big trouble. They're going to get um, killed, essentially. They're going to... Um, what it said here, he will, they will be stoned or shot with arrows and not live whether animal or human. So even an animal couldn't come up on the mountain when God was speaking. He didn't want anybody to see him other than Moses. And then later on in the chapter, he says, I want you to go down there and bring Aaron up with you. So he brings Aaron up there with him as well before God speaks to them. And then guess what happens? God does speak to him. God, this is a cool little oil painting that I found that shows pretty much God and and Moses up there on top of Mount Sinai and all the people down at the bottom observing and watching. But God spoke to everyone um, that day. Everyone heard God. And what they heard was God revealing his commandments, mainly the Ten Commandments. Chapter 20, verses 1 through 17, essentially, are the are where God speaks to all of the Israelites at Mount Sinai. And he gets through the Ten Commandments there with that, through verse 17. And then when, that, when that's over, the people react. The people react to what happened. They, they were scared. They heard God through the thunder and the lightning, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain sounded surrounded by smoke. It was a scary sight. When they saw it, they trembled and they stood at a distance. You speak to us and we will listen, they said to Moses. But don't let God speak to us or we will die. They, they, were, they had a fear of God. They thought, man, if I see God or hear him, I'll, I'll just, I'll die because it's such a powerful voice. And Moses responded to them, don't be afraid for God has come to test you so that you will fear him and will not sin. So that statement in itself kind of sounds like, I don't know, like a catch-22. Don't be afraid, but fear him. So don't fear him, but fear him. But it's two different things. It's don't be afraid of God. God's not not here to, to hurt you and punish you as long as you're doing the good things. But have a fear of what the punishment might be if you don't obey God, okay? God's on your team. He's on your side, but he's also going to punish you. Kind of like a father punishes a child when the child does wrong. The father loves the child, and that's why the father punishes the child is because they don't want them to do wrong. They don't want them to do that bad thing again. So there's a punishment involved. So that's basically what that statement there means. Um, And then Moses receives additional laws after this. Moses received laws um, about burnt offerings. He received laws about slaves and there were laws about personal injury that went on and on and on now tomorrow 
we're going to learn more laws. If you're a lawyer, you're going to love Exodus 22 through 24 because it's laws, laws, and more laws. If you don't like laws, you're probably not going to like tomorrow's reading. But I found it very interesting how different it was than I expected. For instance, the laws about slaves. I was pretty shocked about how slavery worked, especially right off the bat when it says when you buy a Hebrew slave, he is to serve for six years. And then in the seventh year, when you've had him seven years, he is to leave as a free man without paying anything. I thought that was pretty interesting. But he was going to come and leave with what he came with as well. So if he came with a wife, he would leave with his wife. But if he came and then the master gave him a wife and he had babies with that wife, the wife and those kids belonged to the master, not to him. He would have to leave without his wife or his children unless he declared at the end of this time that I love my master, I love my wife and kids, I want to stay. And then he would be forever the slave of his master he could he could opt in to stay longer if he wanted to if he wanted to stay with him that was his choice and decision to make um but yeah i was i was kind of just interested that those were were different than than our common modern day impression of what slavery is and what slavery meant it was a little bit different here in the bible um and one little tidbit I was going to add to this for the history buffs out there. This is just that little little extra piece for you. Harry Truman placed his hand on Matthew chapter 5 verses 3 through 11 and Exodus chapter 20 verses 3 through 17 which are the Ten Commandments as he took the presidential oath of office in 1949. So Harry Truman placed his hand on the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20 as he was sworn in in 1949 as president. And that is your Bible for the day with the preacher's husband. I hope you join me again tomorrow. If this has touched you, please share it. Hit the like button, the subscribe button, and of course, click the little jingle bell so you can get notified the next time I upload a video. And if I've skipped something that was important to you, please put it in the comment section so we can talk about it. I will see you again tomorrow.